The contents of two million Londoners' recycling bins ends up at this waste facility in Southwark. A lot of it's plastic, but perhaps more than you'd think. Campaign group Greenpeace asked volunteers to count the plastic going into their bins. It found an estimated 1.7 billion pieces get chucked each week, equating to 90 billion pieces a year. According to the recyclers, consumers aren't the problem. Regulations and taxes on plastic producers need to be tougher. I don't think today people are the blockers. We really, what we need today is from the government, strong signal, strong uh, incentives on, on, on the industry, the brands, the producers, uh, the waste management industry to really invest and, and, and do that, deliver that. Facilities like this end up having to sort out all our plastic waste. And they're very good at recycling things like hard plastic into milk bottles, drinks bottles. But when it comes to film plastic, plastic bags, crisp packets and the like, all of that has to be sent for incineration. Burning plastic waste has a carbon footprint similar to burning coal. No wonder Greenpeace wants plastics to pretty much disappear. At the moment, we're in the middle of really crucial negotiations for a UN Global Plastics Treaty. And we're asking the UK government to be, show huge ambition, be a leader in ambition in securing a treaty which will deliver a target for cutting plastic production. But binning plastic altogether could have unintended environmental consequences, according to new research. Switching from a plastic carrier bag to a paper bag leads to an 80% increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Emissions for pet food in a tin are around 70% higher than if it's in a plastic pouch. And an aluminium can of drink has a carbon footprint 50% higher than a plastic drinks bottle. This doesn't, of course, include the impact of plastics on the marine environment or microplastics on human health, but hints at a future for the right kind of plastic. Making all the packaging we throw away recyclable, better still biodegradable, not made from fossil fuels. Innovations to replace the miracle material of the 20th century with one fit for the future. Tom Clark, Sky News.